In this online lecture, we're going to learn another way to represent organic molecules. And let me show you how it works. Remember, this is what we call the condensed structural formula. Another way to represent this molecule in organic chemistry is this right here. This is called the bond line formula, or sometimes called the skeletal formula. Let me tell you how to interpret these. Basically, this carbon right here represents that point right there. This carbon is represented here. This carbon is represented here, and this one represented here. So what this means is that in the bond line formula, every end of a line represents a carbon. And every bend of the line right here also represents carbons. So notice in this representation, we're just representing the skeletal framework of the carbon chain. And in organic chemistry, the bond line formula is so valuable to us for two reasons. One, your professor on your exam may represent molecules in this format, so of course we have to know how to interpret them. And two, remember, in order to master organic chemistry, you have to do a lot of organic chemistry problems, which means drawing out huge organic molecules to do your homework could be very time consuming. Using the bond line formula, we can quickly represent a molecule on the fly. And in a lot of cases, all we really need to know is the carbon framework to get to a particular answer in organic chemistry. So to make sure you have this skill, let's look at a sample problem here. This one is asking us to provide the condensed structural formula for this particular compound in the bond line formula. Now remember what we said, every end point and every bend point is a carbon. So we would interpret this as one carbon right here, a second carbon here, a third carbon here, a fourth one here, and then we have an OH. So what that means, below we would put carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3, carbon 4. And carbon 4 happens to be directly connected to an OH, and that's how we interpret it. Now don't worry about the spaces here. I'm leaving room for filling in the hydrogens to finish this thing off. However, let's put some more stuff in here. Notice carbon-3 is doubly bonded to an oxygen. So let's put that on our carbon-3. Now the remaining thing here to do is to fill in those hydrogens. Notice the first carbon is connected to the right carbon, number 2. That's one bond, so he must have three hydrogens on him to complete his four bonds. The second carbon is connected to carbon-1 and to carbon-3. That's two bonds, so his remaining hydrogens must be two to bring him to four. The third carbon is connected to the carbon two and to carbon four, and doubly bonded to the oxygen, which means he has no hydrogens. He has a total of four bonds if you count the double bond as two. And lastly, that fourth carbon, he's connected to carbon three, and he's connected to the OH. That's two bonds leaving two hydrogens to bring him to a total of four bonds. So what you see here below is the condensed structural representation of the molecule above. What's important in organic chemistry is your ability to see the structure above and think the structure below. Let's look at another example here. Provide the condensed structural formula for this molecule. Well first, let's count our carbon chain here. This would be one carbon here, this would be the second, and here's what we're learning here. We would interpret this as a third carbon. This is technically the start of a triple bond, so there has to be a carbon there. And remember, every end of a line is a carbon, so this would be a fourth carbon right here. So writing up our structure here, we'd start with our four carbons in a chain. And then let's figure out the number of hydrogens. Carbon 1 only has one bond to carbon 2, so to complete his four bonds, he must have three hydrogens. Carbon 2 is connected to carbon 1 to the left and 3 to the right, giving him two more extra bonds, therefore he'd be CH2. Carbon 3 is where we start the triple bond, so let's put that there like this. And notice that carbon would have one, two, three bonds to the right, and he'd also be bonded to the carbon to the left, carbon 2. That's a total of four bonds for that carbon, so he would have no hydrogens. However, carbon 4 has three bonds to the carbon to the left, carbon 3, which gives him one more bond left over, therefore he must have one hydrogen connected to him. And this is our answer. 
Now let's look at a little more complex problem here. Same instructions here. Provide the condensed structural formula for this following compound. So let's map things out first here. We got a nitrogen right here. That's directly connected to this carbon right here. Let's call him carbon one. Let's call this bend point right here carbon two. Let's call this our oxygen right here. And let's just call this carbon three for now. And notice on carbon three directly connected to him, we should interpret this as three carbons are directly connected to him. So let's put up our framework here. Here's our carbon one right here. He's connected to the nitrogen over here. Carbon one is also connected to carbon two over here. And let's put our oxygen, remember he's connected to carbon two and then the oxygen then connects to carbon three right here. Now let's fill in the rest of the details here. This nitrogen member has two hydrogens directly connected to him, so let's place his two hydrogens right here. When we walk over to carbon one right here, notice he's bonded to the nitrogen to the left. He's also doubly bonded to carbon two, so we should put a double bond between carbon one and two. And again, don't worry about that space. We'll fill in the hydrogens later. Let's now take care of carbon three right here. Remember he has the three carbons directly connected to him. And if three carbons are directly connected, they only have one bond each to carbon three. So they therefore must each have three hydrogens. That's how we would interpret that. Now going back to carbon one, notice the number of bonds. He has one bond to the nitrogen to the left and two bonds to the carbon number two. That brings you to three, which means he must have one more bond to a hydrogen, so we give him one hydrogen. For the oxygen, remember, he likes to be divalent, so he has one bond here to the left and one bond to the right. And lastly, for carbon two, notice he has two bonds to carbon one. He has one bond to the oxygen, leaving one more bond left over, which must be due to a hydrogen. So this is our answer. Let's look at another sample problem here. Notice the complexity of this molecule right here. These are typical molecules in organic chemistry. So as you can see, the bond line format definitely comes in handy for big molecules like this. But let's make sure we can interpret these molecules. What they're asking us here is to determine the number of carbons and hydrogens in the following molecule. And let's do both at the same time. This is one carbon definitely right here and he has three hydrogens connected to him. This right here is a bend point. We would interpret that as a carbon. And notice he's doubly bonded to the nitrogen above. That's two bonds. He's singly bonded to the nitrogen below. That's another bond. And he's also bonded to the CH3 group. That's a total of four bonds. So that means this carbon has no hydrogens connected to him. That's a very important skill for us to pull off. Let's do it to the rest of the carbons in this molecule. For instance, this would be another carbon within the molecule. Would he have any hydrogens? Well, remember, he's doubly bonded to the nitrogen above. That's two bonds. He's bonded to the nitrogen to the left. That's three. And he's also bonded to this carbon over here. That would be four. So he has no hydrogens. But now let's look at this carbon right here. He's connected to the doubly bonded carbon above. That's one bond. He's also connected to the nitrogen below. That's two, which means he must have two hydrogens to complete his four bonds. Let's keep walking through here. This would be the next carbon. Notice if you count double bond, two single bonds is a total of four. That carbon would have no hydrogens. This carbon right here, notice he has a double bond to the lower right hand carbon and he has a single bond to the left hand carbon. That's a total of three bonds, which leaves one left over, which means he must have one hydrogen. And that's basically true for this carbon as well. He has the same exact arrangement. Also true for this carbon. He would also have one hydrogen and for this carbon right here as well. That then brings us to this carbon right here. He's just like the carbon above. He's got a total of four bonds. Therefore, he was going to have no hydrogens. This carbon right here, doubly bonded to the nitrogen, singly bonded to that ring below, and one bond to the other carbon to the left. That's a total of four, so no hydrogens for him. 
That brings us to this carbon right here, and notice that bottom carbon has the same arrangements and types of bonds as the carbon above, so he would have no hydrogens. Walking over to this carbon right here, he's doubly bonded to the carbon in the upper left. He's singly bonded to the carbon down below. That's three bonds. To give him a total of four means he must have one hydrogen. And notice this is the same case for all the other carbons in this ring. They would all have one hydrogen directly bonded to them. Again, this is the type of skill we need in organic chemistry. Given a bond line structure, we may need to know how many hydrogens are connected to get to a particular answer in organic chemistry. Now, let's just look at one more sample problem to make sure you got this. Let's make sure we can go in the opposite direction. Let's draw the bond line structure for this condensed structural version right here. Well, again, you would start with carbon 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and you would draw out your bond line formula to have this arrangement right here. Notice if you count, you end up with five carbons right here. So this is where you would start. Now let's take care of carbon three. Notice in our condensed structural formula, carbon three is doubly bonded to an oxygen. So it's tempting to maybe put the double bond oxygen like this, but that's incorrect. It's not the convention here. What I want you to know is that this is how you should place the double bonded oxygen, like this. Meaning, in the bond line formula, when you have a carbon doubly bonded to an oxygen within a chain, this is the format that you're going to follow. So, now you know. Just put it that way. And let's fill in the rest of this molecule. Notice, remember, carbon 5 has an OH directly connected to him. So let's place him right there at carbon 5. Which means you are done. This is the answer. There is your bond line formula of the structure above. This is another skill that's going to become very intuitive very soon as long as you practice the problems from your textbook. And remember, we need to get this down so we can get through our homework quicker, which means we can attempt more problems and be more ready for our orgo exam.